when you out here creeping in these streets, slipping and dipping, knowing when to pull out can save your life. And when you're about to land an airplane and it's not going well, knowing when to pull that thing back can save your life. Here are five tips of knowing when to abort a landing and put that thing on the ground safe when you go around. Let's go. Tip numero uno of when you should go around if you're ever doing too much of anything. You're too high, you're too fast, you're too low, you're too slow. A bars all day. You never want to have too much dip on your chip. If you always got that thing nice and steady and going at the airspeed that you want to go at, that's a nice landing for you. If anything is off for any given reason and you feel very uncomfortable that you're not going to land an airplane safely, if that airspeed, that thing ain't thinging, if it's not thinging at all, you need to go around. Make the decision and be pilot in command. Always have control and never be afraid to go around. Numero dos of one of the best tips for when you need to go around and just completely abort the landing is if you're unstable. You got that thing rocking from side to side, up and down, rock steady. You never want to be rock steady, baby. That's good on the dance floor, but not good in the air. If you're in the air, you want that thing to be nice and stable and smooth while you're coming in for the landing. So always be checking for that. If for any given reason, you're feeling uncomfortable and you feel like it's not going to be a stable touchdown, don't be afraid to go around. Number three of some of the best tips for when you should abort a landing and execute a go around if there's any kind of obstacle on the runway. Something can be just chilling off to the side and then all of a sudden spring onto the runway and be an obstacle right in front of you. Just like you can be driving down the street in the whip, music banging, everything going, and a deer or anything can just jump right in front of the road. Similar situations can happen with either other aircraft that maybe approached or got into the runway for any kind of reason or just anything at all. Wildlife, you never know where you might be, baby. Swinging and banging that thing. Always be prepared to go around if your runway is obstructed for any given reason. Even if you've been cleared to land, if you do not feel comfortable, execute a go around. Numero cuatro. This is one of my personal favorites of when you should execute a go around. And it's one of my personal minimums. If you can't land on the first one third of the runway, execute a go around. It's just a nice safety measure for me personally. And I share that with you. You do what you will as you are pilot in command. But ultimately, if you can't just break that one way down into sections, into three sections, and you say, I want to land on that first third of that runway. And if I can't touch those wheels down on that first third, then you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to swing and bang this thing around, baby, because it's not even worth me trying to force a landing in this situation. So make, make your, have your personal minimums, stick to them, and don't never stray from them at any given time. They're your minimums and they're, your, they're, your, they're there in place for a reason for you. So make sure you execute those. And if you're feeling uncomfortable, execute a go around. And number five on the list, for any reason, you are a pilot in command. And if for any reason you feel that you can't make a safe landing, go around. That's part of the responsibility of being pilot in command is to be able to make that decision Make it quickly. Don't linger. If you're ever thinking about, hmm, this might be a situation where I might need to go around, then you should already be executing a go around. Because if it was a nice landing and if it was a good landing, you wouldn't be thinking that way. So that should be a dead clue and a giveaway inside of your mind. I need to execute a go around at this very moment right now. But for any reason, you can go around. Don't make excuses to yourself. Don't make excuses to anyone else. Just execute the go around. Now that you know a few of the tips for when you should go around, Here's how to execute a go around. Nice and smoothly. Let it do what it do, baby. If you're getting ready to execute that go around and you're coming down for that landing, and you're deciding it's not for me. I'm ready to go around right now. Check that carb heat. Make sure you're in the right position. Full power on that thing. And then here's one of my favorites. You want to be dancing on those rudder pedals. Remember, soon as you put the power in, you're changing the configuration of the airplane and a couple of things are going to happen. One, you're going to have to control that y'all. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, y'all. With the right rudder, baby. You got to be on that thing dancing like you're dancing merengue. Boom, 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 boom. Because when you low and slow like that and you jam that power in, it's going to have a tendency, those left turning tendencies, to bring that thing to the left. Right rudder going to bring that thing and keep it right, nice, and center for you at all times times next you got to control that pitch attitude as soon as you put that power in what is what does the power do changes your altitude it's gonna try to pitch that thing up baby you got to control that you want to go up but you want to go up gradually not just shoot up in the sky like that thing you know control that elevator make sure that thing is doing exactly what you wanted to do to get it gradually up 
in the air. And then you want to gradually, and I mean gradually, bring the flaps back in. Remember, if you're coming down for a landing, those flaps, you flapped out up in that thing, baby. So those flaps gonna be flapping. Flapjacks all through and through with extra syrup on them. So you're gonna have to remove that syrup, remove all those fruit and strawberries you got on top, and gradually bring those flaps back in. Remember, you can take off with flaps in. If you're doing executing a short field takeoff, you have the flaps in. So you can, you, you, there's no problem for you to get back into a positive rate of crime with flaps in and then gradually put in. So don't be ex having any kind of anxiety or worry, like I heard I gotta hurry and get the flaps back out. Just gradually take the flaps out. And that's one of the last things that you do as you're establishing that positive rate of climb, getting that thing back into, of course, a nice VX, VY, whatever you're looking for. And then, lastly, you communicate that you are going around. Aviate, navigate, communicate. The tower can see you going around. The second you start to change pitch attitude, looking right at you, baby. I'm looking right at you. I know you're going around. So you, have, you don't have to be hurrying up trying to tell me this. Execute first. Always fly the plane first. Communicate last. Aviate, navigate, communicate, and you're going to be in the right place doing the right thing that you need to do to get you to the next level for the go around so you can set it up nice and pretty on the next time, baby. And these are just five tips for when to execute a go around. Always make it a point to practice your go arounds just like you practice any other skill. You want to have it so it's muscle memory for you. Because when all these things happen, usually you're, it's excitement. It's just like your engine failing. It's just like anything else. You want to make sure that muscle memory is in place so you're executing and doing the right things without having to think about it. That's all you want to do with this and make sure you're going to be good and everything else is going to take care of itself. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Big whoa. Subscribe to this channel for more pilot talk, leadership and self-improvement tips. Let go.